this out. Ah. Okay, we don't have the water off. It's just where the water was getting in behind the tile. This should be coming out. <laughs> Why is it not coming out? This is why you need to replace the steel pipes in your house. I don't ever want to see this again. Nothing like the satisfaction of being able to tear apart something you hate. I think we're going to increase value in this kitchen. This is not acceptable. And that is money in the bank. This is where it gets fun. Fire in the hole! <sighs> it's not the time to be putting out the big dollars. Thank you, hero. There's another tool you won't need to buy. Perfect, every time. So in today's reality renovation episode, we are tackling a really small bathroom in the original three-story walk-up built back in 1915. So what we have is tiny space because of course back then, bathrooms were all about function, just getting you in from outside. They weren't about space. So what we have is a real small you know, conglomeration here. We have a toilet, shower, and it's tiny little sink. And it's had a couple of little modifications over the years. This is not the original bathroom. This is the classic, we're gonna build in and build in and build in and modernize as we go along. My guess, looking at the date of this tile, this was last done in the 70s, uh, maybe even early 80s. Forest Green was huge back then. But you can tell that this tile is probably installed over top of the original mosaic. The tile surround on the tub, it looks like that's a newer wall. Most likely it's been replaced. Uh, you can see that there's some mold issues going on. So obviously it was just tile over drywall. No waterproofing system involved here. Uh, the client just moved in a couple months ago and so they had to kind of jimmy rig a few things together to make it all work, function for them. But we have all this unnecessary architectural feature, we'll call it. <laughs> Bulkheads everywhere. This is a huge box that doesn't need to be here. We went and checked the mechanical going into the basement, so we know we've just got some water and, and vent supply lines in there in the corner. So we have the ability to make the space a little bit bigger. We're going to do a couple of things to make some conversions and turn the way that things are working. We're going to put in a really cool walk-in shower with no door system on it. That way it will make the space work. We don't need a curtain ever again, it'll just be a glass curved panel. And I think at the end of the day, we're going to have to probably level the floor, peel it all back, save the brick, and this is going to be gorgeous restoration into a modern but classic style bathroom. My favorite, they have matching spaceship lights, one on the ceiling and one above the vanity. Very UFO. Okay, so first of all, the biggest secret when you're doing a demolition in your bathroom is space. You need more than you have. So what you want to do is get rid of the toilet first off. Whether you're just pitching it or you're going to save it like we are, getting rid of the toilet is always the first step. Remember, before you touch any plumbing, always turn off the water. So because of the condition of the house that we're in here, this is a three-story walk-up, we don't have individual water shutoff controls. So we have them all at the source. So instead of turning off the water the entire building, we're just going to turn off the water here. And then we're going to flush and drain the tank. Uh, Luckily for me today, I've got my son Matt helping out, which is awesome. Oh, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> Matt, I'm going to need you to grab the wrench for me so I can disconnect the water supply. Okay. This is where we find out if this valve is actually going to work. Yep, good. Looks like it's actually going to work. Hooray. <laughs> Our toilet's ready, we're gonna get rid of the lid, set that somewhere careful, we're saving the toilet. When you're gonna take your toilet out, we got this little system design. The bag is really thick, three mil construction plastic, so you can actually hold onto the bag instead of trying to hold the bowl. Really assists making that job easy. Lift straight up and off goes the races. Okay, then we just back it up and then set it down. So we are breaking with tradition today and I'm not putting in my Tim Hortons cup. This is just a cup from a local coffee shop. But you can see that fits that hole really well. No more sewer gas. Thank God. I'll try to keep it level because there's a huge amount of water in this bowl. Right out onto the deck, okay? Yeah, over the cords, exactly. Before you get too busy tearing everything out, 
take off all of these extra rods that are on the wall. And if there's anything else in the room that you want to keep or recycle or send off to Habitat for Humanity, make sure you uninstall it before you get going with the hammers and all that sort of thing. So this is a typical 16 by 24 medicine cabinet and somebody has gone through the trouble of siliconing it to the wall. And then inside, basically there's usually four screws, two on each side into the uh, studs in the wall. Most interior walls don't have insulation in them, so people love shoving these in there for extra storage. Wow, very cool. So here we have the original exterior wall, lath and plaster. Look at this down here. You can see that's where the old freezing point was. Without any insulation, those walls don't do very well. In the back we have our cast stack. And then next to that is a really small inch, inch and a quarter, I think it's inch and a quarter steel pipe, which would have been probably venting for something. And that is the reason this box is here, it is to cover that up. Which is amazing, because it's really quite large, but I guess they just wanted to build it all the way out to where the tub line came to. So we're going to remove all of that and gain all that space back in our room. So that'll move the box back about five inches, and it'll give us all the footprint we need for our beautiful sweeping shower pan. So we're just going to remove potential injuries out of our way here. There we go. Okay, the shower head is going to be saved along with a wand. It's not going in the new shower, but I believe, whoa, a little surprise inside. We're just gonna just take that aside. You can uninstall all this stuff, mostly just a screwdriver, Phillips drill bit, and a little wrench. Back this out. Ah. Okay, we don't have the water off. I, uh, I think somebody's done me a favor and silicone the hell out of this. <laughs> it should be coming out. <laughs> Why is it not coming out? Okay, so while we're waiting for my son to bring my drill in, because what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this bit here, I'm going to drill the screw out of that handle. The assembly comes apart really quite easily in most situations, but for some reason this one's all threaded and stripped and it's causing us pain. Ugh. So there, this is wonderful. Whoever put this on didn't put it on tight enough, so I was able to just turn it upside down. And we're just going to use the Allen key here to just loosen that off a little bit more. It slides right off the pipe. And this is a little bit unpredictable what's going to happen here, so... This is a very non-conventional way to do this. But, when you have a non-conventional problem, you use a non-conventional solution. Now I can take this off. That hole big enough. There we go. Now this is a half inch standard thread. Half inch standard thread goes back to pipes that are well over 100 years old. I think it was always a half inch standard thread. They've never changed so that you never have to modify from one standard to another. So no matter how old your steel pipe plumbing is, this suck will work. All right. Okay, so my system for doing a demolition in the bathroom is basically fixtures, furniture, then the tile and the walls, and then the floor. So we're going to finish removing the vanity. Here we go. Just got to, oh, look at that. We have shut off valves at the source here. That is lovely. So we're going to shut off the water to this one, and then we'll be able to pull this apart. That's good news. The first thing you want to do is disconnect the faucet and then you want to disconnect the sink from the drain system and then the rest of it you can just you beat the hell out of it. Most of the time when people put these things on they over tighten them. That gasket, there you go, it's all flattened out. There's hardly anything left. If you have a Formica top with a drop-in sink, your best bet is to leave your handle and your sink and your countertop assembly all together and just remove the countertop from the base cabinet. 
undo the plumbing neck here. Okay. <laughs> these, these countertops are usually installed with a screw or something. <laughs> In this case though, it looks like gravity was its best friend. And then we should be able to just Except for the brick. Lift it right out of there. There's half the battle. Straight to the garbage, my man. So they used cement. They didn't use a lot. They didn't have great coverage. They didn't wet the floor before they put the cement down, which is why half of it stuck to the tile and half of it stuck to the plywood. So at least that floor is going to come up easy. That's nice. They used drywall screws to put the plywood down. That's a no-no. First, it's not long enough. Secondly, it's the wrong kind of thread. So this floor is going to be real easy to remove. the satisfaction of being able to tear apart something you hate. <laughs> We're going to come back in and do the surgery as far as removal of the rest of these walls. Uh, you can see down here there's just nothing behind this. Like it is absolute just rot. Okay? And I'll tell you this much, I know. 95% um, of the old homes that are out there, if you have a bathtub and you have mold, that's what your wall is. It's just dust. Okay, you need to rebuild them. What we're going to do is we're going to just be real careful here because we have all the water supply lines going for all three stories going through this wall. What we want to do is we want to cut this wall in half using my hammer, break through the tile, and then open this up like a big panel and just remove it one panel at a time. Now you can see, this is fun. The wall board behind this tile was the water resistant drywall. Okay? Hell of a lot of good it did. Hmm? That's water resistant drywall. This garbage right here. Let's take a look at the back side real quick. It's just where the water was getting in behind the tile. So I just wanted to take a quick moment and talk about these old homes because uh, this has obviously been renovated out the wazoo. Um, first of all, this bathroom space was not part of the original hatch. There's no way. This was done later on. This wallboard back here, these are drywall panels. These are 16 inch by 4 foot. The trademark on this board goes back to 1940. So at some point, soon after 1940, somebody added bathrooms to this entire three-story walk-up. Unbelievable. And they originally used all the threaded pipe, the steel pipe. Here's an original water line still sitting in the wall. Somebody had cut out, but they weren't able to remove from the wall at the time. Okay? So that's what the inside of those threaded pipes looks like. If you have them, it's nice to get rid of them. <laughs> and. They've obviously renovated since the 1940s, modernized this a little bit, put in the green drywall, probably early 80s by the color and the fact that this green is that pale green. Added copper line, which is nice. They've kept the same old vents. Uh, probably will work fine for a long time to come. But you can just, you love how everything's just been cut and stitched back together and nailed back together. There's boards everywhere. My goodness. Nobody's ever rebuilt this wall for running plumbing. They just keep on adding on and adding on and adding on. So yeah, you might find yourself more problems when you open up a whole wall. But it sure gives you a lot more opportunity as well. Like here's, here's the debris from years and years and years of renovating sitting in this wall. Holy cow. Because the house is really old and we don't want to have too many vibrations around this glass. I'm going to just double check. Ten and a half to the glass and tile. Over here, 
I am 11 and a half inches to the existing plaster. So that means that they have the existing lath and plaster plus green drywall and then the tile. So when you smash that, you're smashing solid. a solid exterior wall. Yep. That's plaster and lath. Mm -hmm. All right. So what I would like to see you do is instead of trying to smash your way through that, mm -hmm. break the tile up where the surface hits and then use the claw to get in behind the drywall swinging down. Okay. And then we'll hopefully be able to peel the drywall off the surface. Okay. All right. And start to the left of the glass and see if we can get a good hold of it. All right. Mm -hmm. Use the claw on the left side. Yeah, now take that part off. Wow. Okay, you're gonna want to get your feet out. Can you go hopper? Oh my Look lord. This is how okay. Silverfish. And what are they Hmm? Moisture. Wow. Yeah, when you got that much water damage, Matt, you gotta wear the gotta wear the, the mask. I can't see with these things on. I'm all fogged up. Like when you braid with the mask on, I I can't see really. It's all good though. That's safety first. If you can't see what you're doing, it's safer than being able to see you. Yeah, you heard me. If you can't see what you're doing, it must be safer to wear the glasses with the diaper on your face. Is the tile going to come away from the glass, or is it going to be a problem? I think it's going to be a little bit of an issue. You got it. That's all coming as one piece. Oh, nice hole. That's not going to be drafty at all in the winter time. Though. I did it myself. Okay. how much bigger this room would have been if they just peeled the old one out. Hey, we might be able to get that steel pipe out after all, eh? We be able to see what's going on, right? There you go. Hang on a second, bud. I got you. Hang on. Matt? Yeah? When I said hang on, I meant hang on. Thank you. Fix of the trade. Yes, I was sir. trying to spin it. Yeah, well. And loosen it. I've uh, done that before. It ain't going nowhere. There you go. That's why I came in, I was so going to hold it. it. It's going to swing right down. Yeah. Alright, so we're just starting now to get a handle on, the, you know, what space it is that we're dealing with and how we're going to open this up. We're going to have to keep our back wall pretty much where it was and build back out. We're saving the glass block as part of our finished bathroom. But this whole box here, we're going to remove. We're going to go back to the existing wall. Now, this particular tub is installed directly on the hardwood that was originally in this area. Um, that means that they've also added plywood and tile, so it's now a sunken tub. So we have a complicated situation here where we either lift it up to pull it out or if we remove the box first, I'm lucky in this situation because I'm removing this wall, I can slide it this way and then move it out. Remember, when you're pulling out a tub, you've got the plumbing from the, the, the tub spout, that's in your way, the plumbing from the toilet area coming out of the wall, that's in your way. So you've got a lot of different situations you have to deal with. So I think for us, if we remove this box, we'll pull the tub this way, then we'll have lots of space to pull it out a little bit simpler, and we aren't going to have to fuss around too much. These old steel tubs, they have these little clips. Lovely. Boy, that's really efficient. The one over here was suffering a little bit of water damage, so it's completely rusted away now. 
So that was of no value to the homeowner at all. <laughs> oh, I don't even know what this, what's this? Oh, nice. Some old wall paneling used as a, a backer board. <laughs> That's good for wet areas. <laughs> that looks like an original pedestal sink location. Yep. Sure enough, that's exactly what that was. I love this because in the old days, they'd take the plaster, and while it's still wet, they would draw these lines in it to make it look like tile. <laughs> so when the plaster was dry, they could put a semi-gloss paint on it and make it look like a tile application, even though it's just a plaster application. Now that's being creative. I don't think any of this is really even screwed into anything. Nope. All of those screws missed the wall entirely. Everything's still built out. Ooh, that came off in one piece. Lovely. You know what's really cool is you see all the original threaded steel in here. Steel water lines, right? See what they do is they put a, a copper fitting on the copper pipe they soldered on, and it has the same thread that the old steel fitting had. So you can take brand new copper and just thread it in and convert it. But you saw the other side of that, inside of that other steel pipe. Do you really want that in your drinking water? Eee, to brush my teeth with that kind of crap. So what I'm gonna do is just unscrew the box because they use drywall screws. And... Let's have a look at this dome, see if we can figure out how to make it work. I figured that was a screw in. Nice. And it's just sitting on a couple of mounting screws. And that's it. Oh, ho, ho. even better. Let's pull some wire through. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you know what? If you take the average home before 1960, I'll tell you the majority of the stuff that's in that house looks like this. Jimmy rigged, oh, creative, barely holding together. It's no wonder we've had to change the way we do construction and actually bring in building codes. Oh. Wow, that's scary. I'm gonna grab my hammer. Let's pull the roofing nails out of this thing and see if we can keep it somewhat intact. It's gonna be incredibly brittle. No, this is actually more of a book. That's all. That's a lot of paper. There we go. Don't keep the funnies. Wow. Let's get more in there. Well, oh, there's the brand new delivery truck fleet in the in the company there. I know that's some old stuff. Peaky blinders. Here we go. Let's see if we can find ourselves a date. This is a McLean's Magazine, 1931. Well, at least we know when we renovated. Mobile oil. <laughs> this is a romance novel inside the McLean's Magazine. Probably shouldn't be reading that. I'm a married man. All right. So the fascinating thing here is how much mold is trapped inside this wall cavity. And I think it has to do with the fact that we have so many layers of ceiling and this really cheap fan in the sidewall. It's not removing the moisture out of this room. Time to get rid of this mess. Wow, what do we got here anyway? There we go. Wow, that came out so easy. I'm glad I never used this as a place to wash my face. <laughs> so as you can see, we have now established a space that we can move our tub into. We have to just disengage the drain and overflow. Boom. Here's my little tub tool. And of course, look at this, 1931 tub. And it fits. Unbelievable how standard plumbing is over all these years. And of course, back then they didn't use silicone. They would have just used plumber's putty. And it still isn't leaking, and it's 2018. So for everyone out there who says plumber's putty is not good, I'm sure that this one particular tub's performance has gotten more credibility than anyone who's alive today who have a different opinion. We're separated, we're ready to go. Let's yank this bad boy out. There's nothing holding this down. 
It's just a steel tub. Weighs about 60 pounds. You're gonna lift your end up about a good solid inch and a half to two inches. There's a nail here in there. It's gonna keep you from going any higher than that. Pull it about six inches that way. So then I can pull this tub in front of the plumbing here. And then we can just pick it up, roll it, and lock it up. Stop, 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 stop. Okay. Roll it over that way. It'll make the corner. What? Yeah, just go. End of day one. It's been a long, dusty, dirty one. But that's cool, because I love this kind of stuff. Really happy that our mechanical situations, even though it's been renovated multiple times, are still intact and usable. And we're going to be able to just modify everything that's going on here into our new build. We've designed in advance the idea of putting the shower with a new curved pan. I can't wait to show you guys. This is really cool. And there's no door system on this, so it's just a curved glass panel. It comes as two pieces and you just stick them in and you're, it's going to be beautiful. As you can see, structurally, it looks creative, but it's pretty much par for the course for the day. This kind of stuff was just here to keep pipes from moving around, add a little more vertical strength. Um, Everything here is in great shape. We've got copper for our water supplies. Our drains and vents are in great condition. Our main stack is in great condition. Uh, I'm not even gonna entertain the idea of replacing that at this point because it looks so healthy. And I know it's a three-story home and that's a massive investment to go through changing that over. But what we are gonna do is we're gonna peel everything back down to this barn board because I know from experience that once this is all peeled back to barn board, I can do a little bit of shimming here and there and get a nice flat surface wall again and that's going to be really easy to accomplish. We also have the ability to pull some of this barn board off and get some insulation in these walls and I think that's going to be a really nice plus to have. You know these walls are so thick that a lot of times the freezing point somewhere in the middle but with today's energy costs it is nice to have them insulated just so that we can trap all the heat that we're bringing out of our radium floor. Anyway that's enough about today. Tomorrow we'll finish ripping the rest of this out and then we're going to tackle a little bit of the rebuild on the floor and some of the mechanical issues and trying to get all that prepped up. Hopefully by the end of the week we'll have something that looks sort of like a bathroom and be able to get this back into our hands next week early. It's going to be a six days and done kind of project so stay with us. Alright, so we're sort of midday, day two on our project here. We've got our demolition to the point where we've really opened things up. And it's fun, because this is the point where we get to understand the original use for this room. Because that was always my big question. And what we've got, we figured out that where this window is now, this used to be the entrance to the rear of the house, off the hallway. Very typical in that day that the front entrance and the rear entrance both had a second interior door to stop all the drafts. So this would have been a coat room. So you'd come in the back door, they'd have an area here, like a little closet, probably a coat rack and a little bench, and then you could go into this door and that would lead to the hallway in the kitchen area. Because originally the semi-detached that we're in would have been a three-story single family home. Now sometime in the early 30s it looks like, or early 40s to me, at the latest, they've converted this over to three-story walk-up apartment units, and at that point, they filled in this hole, moved the door into the kitchen, and turned this into a bathroom. So that is why there's so much original plumbing in this wall. This all was originally the chase up to the second floor. And then they came in here and did some add-ins and tie-ins. <sighs> what we want to do now is we want to modernize all of this. So we're at a point now, we understand how this was built. We know how now to finish peeling everything back and then it's time to define this space so we can make a plan to move forward. What we're looking at here right now is a very, very typical renovation, all right? And I know that may seem a little bit extreme, but we're dealing with a house that was built in the very early 1900s, renovated in the 1930s to add a bathroom into this space. And so what you'll see is way up here, two feet above the framing, 
is the original ceiling, okay? And so what they do, and you see this all the time in 60s, 70s, 80s homes, is they'll come in, they'll run all the mechanical underneath the existing ceiling. Someone will come in and then reframe a new ceiling. And if you have 10 feet originally, they'll drop it to eight. If you had nine, they'll drop it to seven or even shorter, depending on the bathroom. And they run all of their mechanical and then they close it up and that's how they define a space. Well, when I'm renovating, I always like to take a look back and say, okay, so I found my frame. Now, A, do I like it? Is it high enough? Is there anything I can do to make changes so that I can get more height? Because to me, in a small bathroom, having extra height and extra light makes the space look huge. And that, to me, is a massive selling feature down the road. So the only limitation that I have in this ceiling, outside of the wiring, which is easily removed, is this copper wire here, and I have a steel pipe here. All right? Now, when I follow this pipe back, to me, right away, I'm saying, okay, that's a vent line for something. It's bringing air. And I follow it down the wall. And lo and behold, this vent pipe is only supplying air to just where the sink is. Now, since we're going to be running all brand new plumbing from the basement to the sink, I have the ability to just cut this off and seal up that cap. And the best part about this is they still make the ABS fittings with the proper thread that I can just take, remove this pipe and fill that hole up and walk away. No special tools or plumbers required. We can't really peel back any more than we, we wanted to. On a really old house, when you have this barn board, okay, that vertical board is actually part of the structure. I do not ever recommend peeling that off just to get a little extra room in the house. The balloon frame construction style, it's not, it doesn't operate the same as point load. So you don't have a stud in the wall where there's weight on top of it and it's sitting on something else solid. Every one of these vertical pieces here is transferring load horizontally to the rest of the wall. And so it's very important to remember, don't define your space by ripping out wood that is actually valuable to holding up your house. Okay, that'd be a real bad problem. <laughs> so part of the fun part of this project is the fact that we've got this fan installed into the wall. Wow. Uh, it's crazy because I know, beyond a shadow of a doubt, an electrician installed this fan. All right, he didn't just run the wire, he did the whole job. And the reason I know that is because up in the wood here, I see all these marks where he had his drill bit going through the ceiling, poking holes, creating a room where he could fish the wire from the box over to this big space outside. He probably bashed out the brick too, cut all the hole, installed it. And, and I know as an electrician because he didn't want to make a big hole in the ceiling. He probably didn't have the skills to patch and repair a ceiling and do a paint job. And by doing it this way, he was able to just put a, a small hole in the, in, the, in the ceiling here and do a little quick putty job and walk away and say, there you go, and now you just got to touch up the paint. And that's probably what happened here. Now, this is such a bad idea. This is not designed to go in a wall. It's built to go in a ceiling. And so this is actually falling apart so fast because the housing is starting to make all kinds of noise. So we're going to rip that out, save the wire, and we're going to introduce a new exhaust in the new ceiling much higher up in the brick and actually run an insulated duct line for that. Oh, this is just so wrong. I don't ever want to see this again. There is a wall fan on the market that's designed to be installed in a wall, but for God's sake, buy the right fan. It's only another $8. <laughs> so here we are, and this is going to be sound a little confusing, but in the original, original bathroom, this framing was part of the box that came out, huge box effect that was here. And originally, when they decided to make this a bathroom, they added steel water supply lines. Okay, here they are. And they were cut off and left in here at some point. But then there was another renovation and somebody got rid of the steel supply and went to copper. Now there's a fitting you can put on a half inch copper and you can thread into that old, old steel line and that's fine. And so then that was the water supply for a little while. And then someone else came along and said, oh, I don't like that, let's cut it off. Let's shove it in this wall and like they literally buried it in the wall and then brought new lines in from the bottom. Don't understand that. It doesn't make any sense to me at all, except for they wanted to not be using the steel pipes anymore. So what they did is they brought this up through the floor. Now, now we have this box to find with junk in the corner that has to be removed. We've got new lines coming through the floor here that I've got to cut and remove. I'm just going to say this once. When you're renovating a space, 
try to think a little bit more long term. Don't be afraid to run things in near a wall. <laughs> uh, bringing them up through the middle of the floor, just because it might seem convenient from the basement, doesn't do any good for anybody else down the road. Always try to cut out, when you're not going to use something anymore, cut it out and get rid of it. This whole box was totally unnecessary because if they just ran a new drain into the basement, which is right underneath this, they wouldn't have needed the whole steel line in the whole box either. They could have basically just put the, a piece across the corner to cover the cast, and they would have had a ton more space in this room, which is what we're going to do, and you're going to see how that changes the whole way the bathroom works. So we're going to just talk floor here real quick. What I did is during the demolition, I just stopped and vacuumed this up to give you an idea of how many layers are in this house. Now we have an original one by 10. It's on a 45 degree angle. This is the structural, this is doing all the work. Okay, this is carrying all the way to the floor. This one's stretched across the floor joists downstairs. And then they finished it off with a nice hardwood. You know, it's a two and a quarter inch, three quarter inch thick, tongue and groove. Real standard for the time. These trees grew down the street. They'd cut them down, mill them, put them in their house. You expect to see this. But what they did is when they decided to turn this into a bathroom, they wanted to have a surface they could tile on. So what they did is they added three quarters of plywood on top of three quarter hardwood. I'm not sure what the thinking is there, but the secret to putting down a three quarter inch plywood is using a long enough screw to attach the plywood to the subfloor, which is this one, not the hardwood. This hardwood was put in with pin nails. I call them pin nails. They're like large iron triangles, okay? They're not a screw. So this is not screwed to this. So if you attach this to the hardwood and you don't attach this to the subfloor, you still have movement. And tile is gonna have bad performance with movement. Well, these monkeys went ahead and they put this down with one and a quarter inch fine thread drywall screws because that probably was all they had on them at the time and they were too lazy to go to the store and buy a box of screws unbelievable made my job easy picking it up but just stupid folks if you're going to build something take the time to use you know do, do it right to a certain degree i mean there's there's a lot of different ways to do something right but there's really some ways to do things dead wrong this is one of them we're going to peel all this crap back get back to our subfloor Put on a thin layer of plywood because we're looking for the inch and a half of total thickness in wood. All right, we're going to add some two by fours underneath for structure, for load transfer, just to stiffen up the old house a little bit. But we're going to put on a little bit of plywood, throw in our electric heat, pour in some leveler, and we're going to have not just a strong and a floor that's not bouncing around, but we're going to have it level again for the first time since this bathroom was built. Finally, it's going to get done right. So by far the best feature in this bathroom, this firewall behind me. This is the separation wall between this semi and the other one. Love the old red clay brick. No, we're not in an old Manhattan apartment. This is just downtown old Ottawa. And we're going to leave this exposed and clean it up a little bit. It's going to be a great feature. We don't want to make the room smaller by putting a wall and drywall here. We're going to keep this where it is and that'll work out great. Now listen, when you're dealing with your defining your space, you obviously have budget concerns, right? Demolition is free. It's just your time. Um, obviously, we're building this channel for homeowners, do-it-yourselfers, and that's you. So when you're doing your demolition, that's you. The more you take out, the more opportunity you have, but you have to be a little bit patient because if you took out the framework in the ceiling, and then you later decided that you weren't going to change the height of the ceiling, now you've got to go out and buy a brand new framework and install it again. So take everything one step at a time, go back to the existing shell, figure out what it is that you want to change, what you should change and what you could change, but maybe don't want to have to pay to get done. Find out, are you going to do the electrical yourself? Are you going to do the plumbing yourself? Are you going to change your mechanical yourself? And if so, do you have the ability and the tools and then take a little bit of a cost benefit analysis, okay? Take a deep breath, you can get excited and emotional real quick about a project like this. And just say, if I get another six inches in this ceiling, is it work all, worth all that extra work? Is it worth all the extra expense? Ripping things out is free, but putting them back isn't. Fittings are expensive, okay? 
um, all your new mechanical stuff, it can cost a fair amount of money. So just by changing some plumbing around and doing a couple new electrical things, before you know it, even doing it yourself, you could throw another $500 into a room that already has everything functioning. So just think twice about it and enjoy your renovation. I know a lot of people, you might not think so, but your plumbing has an expiration date. If you have a home that was built at the turn of the century up to the early 30s, you're going to have steel plumbing in your house. And we're going to show you a little demonstration during part of the demolition of this bathroom in this video to show you exactly what you're going to see in that line. And it's going to shock you. Now in the particular project we're on here, we're raising the ceiling and we're making modifications to the locations of all the plumbing. So we've opened it right up so that we can rip all of the old plumbing out and put in new stuff. And so we're not going to take too much time. We're going to go to the footage that we shot of us cutting these pipes in half. And you can decide for yourself if you're comfortable staying with the water lines that you have in your home. Just a quick note, when you're working in this kind of environment, we're going to be cutting something that's got a lot of weight attached to it. So in order to keep the blade from binding, you just want to cut in a little angle away from yourself so that all the way to that pipe is connected to the last point of contact. And just when you're about getting ready to cut through, you'll be able to grab that pipe and just twist it off. I'll show you what I mean. Otherwise, if it binds on the blade, it can throw you. <laughs> that's not a pleasant experience. quite enough room in here to maneuver this but there we go okay that is called working smart control the environment and something like that's not gonna land on your head one day let's get rid of this one too as low as we can that'll make it easier to pull it out from downstairs now this is interesting because this is how you can confirm whether or not it was wet or dry. You know that's only air. Look how clean that pipe is. Are you ready for this? Now check out the drain. It's almost plugged completely solid. There's just a little bit of a hole left for the water to go down. This is why you want to rip this stuff out. When it starts to corrode inside the pipe, it grabs all the debris and hair that goes down the drain. And before you know it, it's just plugged solid. This is why you need to replace the steel pipes in your house. Okay, so during our exploration here, we've come across some steel plumbing that's still being used in this home, both in the drain, the vent, and in the water supply system. So what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna cut the water supply line open real quick, have a take a look at the integrity of this because there are a couple locations in the ceiling and one in the wall here that I might wanna take a look at replacing out. Now traditionally, water supply lines, they last a really, really long time. But if you're gonna do a bathroom renovation and you expect to last for 40 years and you tack that onto the age of the existing plumbing, you'd hate to run into a problem with the plumbing before the bathroom runs its life cycle because you may not be able to fix that without destroying your new work. So let's have a quick look here together and we'll see what the steel piping looks like ah, inside the line. Now, right away, this hasn't been in use for a while, so let's use a grain of salt when we digest this, but you can see all that crap. You have a really small, it looks like a fridge supply line at this point. Now, if you have that sort of supply line in your shower and you're wondering why you have no water pressure, that would be why, okay? So there you go, folks. Uh, lesson to be learned, the old steel lines they have a life expectancy. They will not last forever. So if you're renovating and you run into them, I would suggest do everything you can to update those lines. All right, Whew, what a mess. Remember, whether it's water supply or drain lines, you might be surprised what's going on with your pipes. That's the vent line, it looks nice and clean. And you cut something like that, you think my plumbing's in great shape. And then you cut the drain side and you go, oh my God. Take a look, and if you have this old junk, please get rid of it. Besides, your house will love you. It weighs a lot. And get that off the old floor joists. There we go. Okay, surprised they didn't do that the first time. For whatever reason, at some point, these guys put an ABS system 
they chained off the old cast iron pipe and put in this and then they connected this to the existing steel probably with this joint because they didn't want to open up the walls when they did the last renovation but now that we've gotten rid of the steel i'm just going to take my handy dandy little pipe cutting tool here and the back side as well all right and we'll get rid of the rest of this ah now that's all garbage i remember whenever you cut and expose your pipes take the two seconds it takes to put on a test cap until you're gonna go do your plumbing. That'll keep the sewer gases from coming in the room. We have a absolute network of copper lines down here. Like I said, this is a three-story walk up, three different units. Each one of them has their own hot water tank and water supply lines. And these are our hot and cold for what we're doing. So since we're redefining how our space works, what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut these lines here today. And I'm gonna install these shark bite ball valve handles here and that just slides onto the pipe on each side and then I can convert to PEX. This way when I get the final resting place for my vanity which has got drawers and some other accessories in it and my plumbing has to be pretty precise I can get all that sorted out get the location approved by the client and then I can run my plumbing up through the floor from here at a later date just using PEX tubing. It'll only take me about five minutes. I have the ability now for my client to come running down the stairs, run through this door and just go and turn these two valves right off right here with no obstruction and don't have to reach around or move things out of the way in the case of emergency. And that kind of peace of mind is worth its weight in gold. It also gives me a couple of feet extra here in case they ever want to add any water lines in the future. Down here there's no laundry sink so that's the thought. And that way, if they ever wanted to add something in the future, it's in a convenient location and it's just a quick PEX crimp and we can add lines to run off. I always try to think, what ifs? Because I can cut the copper over here. That's awkward for me now. I can do it here and that makes it convenient and it gives me flexibility down the road. You know, something to consider for every homeowner actually is to take a look at your main copper lines and put these ball valves on because they don't have any washers. They'll always be working for you. And then in case of emergency, if you have your water supply tucked in in your storage room, buried behind a bunch of stuff, you can't get to it fast enough to stop a major problem. But having an access door or something like this at the bottom of your stairs in your basement, where you can just throw the lid and take two handles and do a quarter turn and shuts the water off to the whole house in emergency, that is worth the investment of $20 a ball valve and a few minutes of doing it yourself plumbing. Just turn and tighten. There we are, and we're there. Woohoo! All right, now, now the best thing about Shark Bite is you can install wet. You don't have to wait till this is done draining and dry. You don't have to go to the cupboard and get a loaf of bread. You don't have to do any silliness like that. You don't have to leave the plumbing off for two hours and come back until it's all done draining. And. You just roll it on there, push and turn. All right, there we go. Now we're in place. Keep going. This is just a quick five minute job. That gives me a ton of flexibility. And this way, I only have to do plumbing once. And the, every time I need to make any adjustments for the rest of this project, I can just come down here and turn off the water supply. Now, if you want to check if it's installed properly, try to pull it off. If you can't pull off, it's installed properly. Now, even after all the plumbing is finished, I can change the position of these handles. Okay, so I probably are going to want to have them flat like this, closer to the ceiling, where I can give them a turn nice and easy. So if I come down and I'm in an emergency, I can just turn these like this, I'm done. Beautiful. 20 bucks a piece, about 10 minutes worth of work. Peace of mind. All right, well, that's pretty much it for all of our demolition, uh, defining our space, uh, fixing up our mechanical, modernizing so that we have the capability to put in brand new fixtures and get years and years of enjoyment. I guess the next time we see you, we're gonna be done and we'll get to reveal this project to you.
really, really proud of the job we did in this house. Uh, of course, you know I have a leaning towards century homes, and this one's definitely over 100 years old. You can see by the fire brick here, this is the separation wall. We have a number of challenges in this room that are very unique to this particular house. Now, this dimension itself of this bathroom is a typical 5x7. And so traditionally, if you have the doorway into a 5x7 space on a short wall, you have all the space you need for a tub, shower, toilet, vanity. But in this particular unique configuration, because the door is coming off of a long wall, we are very limited in our space. We have a stack that's supplying three stories of bathrooms hidden in this box. We've got a window that wasn't going anywhere due to budget constraints. And it is right in the middle of this wall. So there's nowhere to begin and end any shower coming from either of these other corners. What we've got is we've got the wedge from Miralin. And this is a problem solving solution, 66 inches long. It comes with a piece of glass. It's made contoured for this particular pan. It allows you to have access and separation all in one little container. And it has made it possible for us to get all three of these features in here. So we have a much larger sink than we had originally. We have a nice clean space, it's very modern. We raise the ceiling to give you that illusion of space and added lots of lighting. Of course, the, the shower system is a little bit on the simple side. It's a two function. So we've got a three jet here. So you've got massage feature as well as the overhead rain shower. And because the Rehabel Pro system is a lot, has a mixed function on it, you can pick either or, or you can mix them together. So you can sit here getting the rain shower and a good back massage. It's an awesome experience. And of course, with the built-in mirror here that has the, 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 um, the Wi-Fi signal, you can have your sound system playing at the same time. Awesome experience. And of course, we couldn't finish something like this sexy off without putting an in-floor heating system. Now this system is set up so it's not just a floor warming, but it is a room heater. So we got the thermostat set for the kind of heat we want here in the winter time, and we can adjust it to the floor temperature for the year round comfort. All in all, amazing look, right? Exposed brick, great design elements. It actually functions. You're not claustrophobic and it's in a tiny, tiny space. Really, really pleased. I love it when a client comes to me with a problem and says, go fix it and tell me when you're done. <laughs> That's a dream client for me. Anyway, uh, if you have questions about any of these products, look in the description below. We're making some available for you with great discounts. We have a Shopify page. Don't forget to check us out on Instagram, but most importantly, like the video if you do. This is our second season of Reality Renovision. Really excited to bring you more videos like this. And we also want to have you subscribe to the channel if you're checking us out for the first time. Okay, so that's just about it from us. Check out our how-to library. We got all the information you need in there so that you can turn your house into your palace. Go ahead and build wealth. That's what this is all about. Go make yourself a lot of money, make your house gorgeous, and have fun doing it. So I hope you enjoyed this episode of Reality Renovision. If you're new to our channel, then I suggest you subscribe to the channel over here. Don't forget to hit the bell icon for notifications so you'll be told every time a new video comes up. And if you'd like, you can click the link right here and you can binge watch all the episodes that we have on our playlist. Amazing information, everything DIY and decor and renovation and remodeling. Thanks for joining us.